and welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel, brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, we are going to work on part four of this six part series for the My First Sock with Marley Bird Knit Along. This is part of the 2018 Spring Knit Along for Red Heart Yarns. And in this knit along, you learn how to make this fantastic, rather simple sock. So far, we have learned how to do the cuff, how to do the leg, and how to do the heel flap. And now we're really to the heart of the sock. The next part of this sock is where we will learn how to do the heel turn and the gusset. The instructions for this next section can be found in the link provided in the video description box right down there below. While you're down there, go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say to let people know you enjoyed this video. Now, I am going to tell you, it is very, very important that you have your homework done up to this point and really follow along with me as I walk you through step by step how to do the heel turn and the gusset. I will provide as many tips and tricks as I have up my sleeve for you to get through this heart of the sock, this meat of the sock, because once you get past this, it is smooth sailing, you guys. So grab your homework, get your pattern, Join me back here, we're gonna jump right on in. As I mentioned before, we are really at the heart of the sock. Once we complete this heel turn, the direction of our sock knitting is going to change. That way our sock will fit nice and correctly on our foot. The heel turn is a tricky little piece of business because we're going to do some short rows, but don't worry, I will walk you through step by step how to do these short rows. But here's a couple words of wisdom from me to you. First, if you have never done this before, this is a good place to put a lifeline. Go ahead and add a lifeline to your heel flap. That way, if you happen to mess up with your heel turn, you have a place to rip back to without messing up all of the work you did in part three. Okay, so go ahead and add a lifeline if you need to. Secondly, this part of the sock is one of those parts that you really want to make sure you do in one sitting. This isn't something that you can get started with and put down and maybe work on later on after dinner. You really want to work through this entire step with me on camera, okay? So go ahead, grab your homework, maybe a cup of coffee, maybe take a potty break real quick, but then sit down and really buckle in and let's work through this heel turn together. Don't worry, I'm here to hold your hand and you will get through it and you're gonna be amazed and it's gonna be like, oh my gosh, that was so great once you're finished because it's gonna look like just this little magical piece of a triangle <laughs> on your sock. And I know you can do it, but I just wanna make sure it's as easy as possible for you. And the best way to do that is for you to do it all in one sitting, okay? So you got that? Make sure you add a lifeline if you've never done this before. And secondly, if you are ready to get started, make sure you do it all in one sitting. All right, let's jump in and do this heel turn. At this point, your homework looks a little something like this. And so here is my heel flap. I have 24 stitches on here and I'm getting ready to follow the instructions for the heel turn. Once again, the link to the instructions can be found in the video description box below. After part three, you finished after a right side row. So you're ready to begin a wrong side row because the heel flap begins on a wrong side row. Let's go ahead and jump in with the instructions as they're written. I'm working on the lady size sock. So I have a total of 24 stitches on my heel flap. And you'll see that I'm beginning on my wrong side row and I start off with a purl 13. I'm no longer maintaining the three stitch garter stitch that we did on the heel flap. I am completely purling all 13 of these stitches. and that's 13. Now that I have purled 13, I wanna go ahead and do a purl two together. So I'll take my needle and put it in between those next, or put it into those next two stitches and purl those two stitches together. Now that I've done that decrease, I need to purl one past that decrease. Now, here's where the short rows begin. Are you ready? 
We will leave all of these stitches over here unworked and we will go ahead and turn our work. Now we work row two. Row two has us begin by slipping that first stitch as if to purl with my yarn in back. Then I knit three stitches. So one, two, three, and now I have to do an SSK on my right side. So I do a slip, a slip, take my left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two slip stitches and knit them together. So that's my decrease on the right side and I have one stitch past my decrease. Just like we did over here, we're gonna leave all of these stitches unworked and turn our work. What we've done so far is set up our base and now we're gonna begin to work our short rows, increasing one stitch every time we turn our work. We'll have one more stitch that we're actually working into. Let me show you what I mean. I've turned my work, let's go ahead and move on to row three. Row three has us begin by slipping our first stitch as if to purl with our yarn in front. And then we are going to purl to within one stitch of the gap. Now what is the gap you might be asking? Well, let me get to it. As you're purling across, you will come to the point at which you did your turn. And that is the gap I'm speaking of. The purl two together we're getting ready to do will actually close this gap, okay? So let's go ahead and do our purl two together and it closes that gap. Then you have to purl one stitch past that gap and we're gonna leave all of those unworked again and we will turn our work. Now you slip one as if to purl with the yarn in back and now we will knit across to one stitch with it before our gap. You'll know where the gap is, you'll feel it. See, it's right there. That's where we did our turn. So on this side, on our right side, when we do the SSK, that's gonna close our gap. So we slip a stitch as if to knit, slip a stitch as if to knit, take our left hand needle, put it in the front leg of those two stitches, and knit them together. Now we'll knit one stitch past that decrease, and turn. With our yarn in front, we will slip that first stitch and then purl across to within one stitch of the gap. I'm to my gap, so I will purl two together and then purl one past that purl two together. Turn my work. Slip the first stitch as if to purl with the yarn in back. I will knit to within one stitch of my gap. Here's my gap. I will close my gap with the SSK and then knit one and turn my work. I will continue to do this until I have no more gaps to close, okay? And as you're doing this, you're gonna notice you're starting to get a nice triangle at the bottom of the heel flap. So this heel turn, we're creating a nice little triangle. And that's where your heel is going to sit. Here's our gap. I will purl two together because I'm on my wrong side. Purl one stitch past my gap and turn. I'm to the right side. I slip the first one with the yarn in back. I will knit over to within one stitch of my gap. Here's my gap. I do an SSK and then knit one. Now I'll turn. Slip the first one with, as if to purl with the yarn in front because I'm on the wrong side. I'll purl to within one stitch of my gap. Here's my gap. I will purl two together. 
purl one stitch. Ha ha, all of those stitches are worked. That's a very good sign. I will now turn my work and I have one more gap to close, so I've got to go back. So I will slip this first one and then knit over to my gap. When I get to my gap, I will work my SSK just as before. And then knit one. All of the stitches are worked. By this point, you should be able to see that you have a nice little triangle. Can you see that little nice little triangle? And at this point, you should have 14 stitches if you're working on the ladies and 18 stitches if you're working on the man's. I've ended after a right side row, which is exactly where I want to be. See, I told you it was magical. Isn't like this just the cutest little thing? And you can hold your sock now at this point and be like, oh my gosh, look, look what you've created. And you can see where your sock is gonna start getting worked in this direction, right? So as you set this down, you're really starting to see where this is starting to take shape, right? Well, the work's not done yet. We've done the heel turn, but now it's time for us to get back to working in the round. Okay, so this is the next step. We're gonna do the gusset. Go ahead, go have a potty break, get some more tea, join me back here, because this is another one of those steps. You wanna get started and make sure you work through without putting it down. Okay, the fun of just working with two needles is over. It's time for us to get back to working in the round. And in order to do that, we are going to have to pick up stitches. Right now, your sock looks a little something like this, right? You have this really cute little heel turn you've just completed. You have your, your stitches for the top of your foot still hanging out up there, just kind of being like, doo-doo-doo, I'm waiting for you. But we have all of this empty space over here. This empty space is where we are going to have to pick up stitches so that way we can begin working the gusset of our sock. Now I do want to remind you what the gusset is, okay? As you take a look down here, you can see the actual finished sock. And we have our heel flap right here, and we've just done our heel turn. And all of this right here is what we're getting ready to do. We're getting ready to pick up stitches along our heel flap. When we do that, we are gonna have more stitches on our needles than we cast on. So in order for us to get back to the number of stitches we cast on, we have to do a series of decreases at this join point to make sure this needle and this needle get back to the same number of stitches as this needle and this needle. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at our actual sample homework, okay? The first thing we need to do is take our heel stitches and separate them onto two needles. When we do this, the needle that is going to be left over here to the right side of our heel will be our needle five. The needle over here to the left side of the center of our heel will be needle one. This is also important to note that the center of our heel is now actually our beginning point, okay? So as before, when we had this marker up here to let us know where our needle four was, we are actually going to move that marker and we will put that marker over here on the, the heel on the right side of center, okay? So here we are. I'm right here. Let's go ahead and take our needle and let's slip half the number of stitches that you have on this heel uh, turn right here. We're gonna slip half of them over onto the spare needle. So for me, that would be seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See what I mean about the marker is now over here? So this is the end of my round. Every time I see my marker over here, that will now be the new end of my round. Okay, now I have my two needles here like this, but remember I have all of this spare space here and this is where I wanna pick up stitches. But before I jump in and do that, I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna get a hole at the top of my gusset. So here's a little trick that I learned from Charlene Church when I learned to um, make socks. 
What she does is up here at the top of the gusset, okay, up here at the top of the gusset, it's really convenient because I have color here. But right here where I have these two suede stitches, can you see those two suede stitches? I have a brown one right there and a brown one right there. And they're separated right here at the gusset. What I wanna do is I'm gonna take a marker and looking at this stitch right here, if this is the right leg and that's the left leg, I'm gonna put my marker through that left leg. And then looking at that stitch right there, if that's the left leg and that's the right leg, I wanna also put this marker through that right leg. I'm gonna button this up so you can see what I've done. I've put my marker through two stitches right there, okay, through the leg of two stitches. What will happen is when I get up to this point, I'm actually gonna put those two legs of those two stitches on my needle, okay? I wanna do the same thing over here at the top of the gusset on this side as well. I'll grab another marker and I have my stitch right there and my stitch right here. I'm gonna grab the left side of that stitch and I will grab the right leg of that one. So it's the left side and the right side. If I pinch that together, you can see those two there, okay? So that's my prep, all right? So there, there we are, let's see here. This is what we have. Make sure yours is just like this, okay? You've, you, you've moved your marker up here so that, to let you know that this is the start of our round. You've separated your heel turn stitches onto two needles and you have marked two stitches up here at the top of the gusset. Now it's time to pick up stitches. When you pick up and knit stitches, it's really not that difficult because we have done this really great garter stitch edge to our heel flap. So what we wanna do is be consistent in where we pick up stitches. If we pick up stitches between each one of those ridges, we should be able to get 12 stitches because that's what we want if you're working on the ladies. You wanna pick up 16 stitches if you're working on the men's. One way to pick up stitches is to simply stick your needle directly into one of the stitches, whether you pick up one leg or if you pick up two legs, whatever you do, just be consistent about it. Yarn over your needle and then pull that through. You can also use another needle. Find where you wanna pick up that stitch. Let's say I wanna pick up my stitch right there. Now I can say, okay, let's treat that as if it's a stitch on my left-hand needle. Go ahead and take this needle and go into it, right? So it's just like I'm knitting that stitch off of my left-hand needle. And I could do that all the way up, okay? So let's see here, let's do this again so you can see. I'm gonna go between these two garter stitches. I'm putting my needle in. So now I have a stitch on my needle. I'll take my right hand needle now, this is the one I want my stitches on, and I'm going to just knit that stitch. You see how that works? I will go in and then knit that stitch. In and then knit that stitch. In, oop, I picked up two there, I just want one. So I wanna be consistent. Whatever you do, just be consistent with it. And then knit that stitch. Can you see here where I have my initial seven stitches from my heel turn and I've started to pick up stitches and I'm keeping it consistent by picking them up between each one of the garter stitches. Okay, so I can, I usually like to pick up my stitches without any needle, I don't usually need it. So I'm just going to pick up stitches here and I'm just going between the garter stitches, okay? Between each garter stitch until I get 12 stitches on here. Okay, so I've picked up 12 stitches and it's time for me to come to where I've marked those two stitches, okay? And here's what I'm gonna do. I am simply going to put those two stitches just like that. I'm gonna put a stitch like that and a stitch like that. I'm just putting it right on my needle. That's all I'm gonna do, okay? You see that? It's simply just resting on my needle. It's convenient that they happen to be a different color because I did stripes, but they're literally just gonna rest on my needle. I'm not knitting them, I'm not doing anything else, okay?
now that I'm at the end of this needle, I can rotate and I will get these stitches that I've just been hanging out there since before the heel flap back into action. So I will continue on working my stockinette stitch along these stitches right here. If you were doing a pattern stitch, you could carry your pattern stitch down the top of your foot and that's what you would do at this point. Totally up to you. But for me, I did stockinette and stripes, but I'm gonna continue down the rest of my sock with just my plain um, linen color. I'm not gonna do stripes down the top of my sock. Notice I rotated my work. I'm going to knit these stitches now. It's just like before, I'm just starting to get back into the rounds, but I've gotta get those stitches prepared for me, okay? So I've turned my work, I'm knitting down this needle. I get down here to the very end, awesome, I'm done, and I rotate, and I don't have any stitches. <laughs> that's okay, because that's the next step. We now need to pick up stitches along this side of the heel flap, okay? And the first part here is because we're at the top of the gusset, we're on this side, we were from the bottom and worked towards the top. Over here, we're at the top. So we're gonna start off by placing those two stitches on my needle, those two stitches that I marked earlier. I'm just gonna place them on my needle. Now I can go ahead and start picking up my 12 stitches again. So I will go into this side of the heel flap and pick up and knit a stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Let me get that twelfth one. Once I get the twelve, I'm down here where I meet up with my needle number five, right? This is needle that I split my heel turn stitches on. So all I need to do is knit those stitches. I don't have to do anything else to them. I just have to knit them and get them all over here on this needle I just used to pick up those stitches. We can set this down and see what we have here. And look at that, we can see where we're starting to work in the round again. We have our marker right here letting us know this is our needle four, so that is the end of our round every time we get over here and see our marker. We have stitches picked up along the side of our heel flap here. We have the two extra stitches up here, which we're gonna deal with in the next section. We've worked across our stitches that were waiting for us the whole time. We have our two extra stitches over here also that we put on. We picked up our stitches along the heel flap on this side and worked the other half of our heel turn and we're ready to work in the round. Congratulations, you have made it through the pick up round for the gusset. I knew you could do it and I know that it's a little bit trying and a little bit of a challenge, but I promise you it will be worth it. Okay, you ready for this next step? There's only a couple things going on and then you're gonna be left to finish your homework. Whew, here we go. All along I've been saying we're working the gusset and our gusset stitches are gonna be worked at these two points on these two needles. What we want to do here is we wanna get this needle here and this needle here back down to the same number of stitches they had when we did our initial cast on. So for example, this one, I had 48 stitches originally. I had 12, 12, 12, and 12. Well now I have 21, 12, 12, and 21, okay? So I need to get this needle here with 21 and this needle here with 21 back to 12. And I will do that by decreasing at this point and this point every other round past my setup round. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and we pick up our work and we're back in the round, remember, we're back in the round. So we pick up our work and we will go ahead and I will, for this first setup round, remember the first two stitches need to be nice and tight, we're back to that again, and we will knit 
all the way up to the last two stitches of this needle, which just so happened to be the two stitches that I put on at the top of the gusset. We're actually going to decrease those two stitches and what that's gonna do is hopefully eliminate any hole or gap you might have. So here we are and I have those two stitches on here and I'm gonna go ahead and remove my marker now and I will do an SSK. So I'm going to slip this first stitch as if to knit, slip that second stitch as if to knit, and then knit those two stitches together with my SSK. Once I've done that, I rotate my work and I carry on. So now I'm at the, this is the top of my foot and I will go ahead and just knit across these stitches. Again, make sure you're really pulling those needles nice and snug. Those first two stitches need to be nice and snug. And they're gonna wanna fight you a little bit, okay? As we're working down these gussets, um, these gusset decreases, those, those points at the needles at the gusset are gonna wanna fight you. And you wanna make sure you keep them nice and tight, those stitches nice and tight. Finish that needle, rotate my work, and then we'll do this one and we're gonna get back to the other side of that heel flap, to my other gusset. So this is needle three I'm working off of, okay? Needle three, and I'm getting ready to go to needle four. So here is my needle four. I'm at the top of my gusset, and you'll see that the instructions say to knit two together. So right here, I'm gonna remove my marker. I'm gonna knit these two stitches together. Now I'll go ahead and I'll knit to the end of this needle. Once I get to the end of this needle, I'll put my work down so you can see what we've just done and I will explain why I did it, okay? This is one of those things that, like I said, I learned from Charlene Church, who is a wonderful sock designer and um, I, I has been very helpful and um, been a good tool for me to prevent getting holes at the top of my gusset. As I set down my work here, you can see I'm, I'm still in the round, but let's take a look up here at those gusset stitches that I decreased. When I decrease those stitches, I have now eliminated any sort of hole that I would have gotten right there in the gusset. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? Let's take a look. Let's look at one I've already done so you can see here. Right here is, see that brown right there? That's where I did my decrease at the top of my gusset. And see how I don't have a hole? There's no hole there at the top of my gusset. And it's because I did that decrease. If I look at the other side as well, I don't have a hole at the top of my gusset because I did that decrease. So if you do that decrease there, that setup round with that decrease, eliminating those two stitches that we just put on our needle, that will help you um, hopefully prevent any sort of gap that you'll have at the top of the gusset. Now, that doesn't mean that that's gonna prevent any sort of ladders. For that, you have to make sure you maintain that nice snug knitting that you will do on all of your knitting as you're working in the round, just like we did before. This next set is where we begin our repeat for these rounds. And this is where things get a little bit interesting and I'm gonna give you um, some of my advice, my tips and tricks of things that I like to do. What we're gonna do now is we will work up these stitches to the last three stitches. We never wanna work our decrease at the very last stitch of the needle. We always wanna work it like one stitch in, okay? So that's why we work to the last three. The traditional way of doing socks is when you get to these last three stitches, you would work a knit two together and then a knit one. And then on the opposite side of the gusset, you would work a knit one SSK. An alternative way of doing it is to work to the last three stitches and work an SSK knit one, and then on the opposite side, do the knit one 
uh, knit two together. So I'm really switching up the two decreases. It's totally your choice what you want to do. For me and on the actual sock pattern, I did the, the alternative way because I think it looks better and it actually helps me keep my stitches tighter as I'm working those gusset stitches. So I prefer that one. It's really super easy, you guys. It's just a matter of what decrease you choose. So I am going to knit up my needle one. This is needle one I'm knitting onto. This is the one that we are going to be decreasing our gusset stitches on every other round. And I'm gonna get to the last three stitches. When I get to these last three stitches, the traditional way would be for me to do a knit two together at this point, and then a knit one totally fine. The non-traditional way would be for me to do an SSK and then a knit one. You see what I mean? It's just a different decrease choice. Either one you want to do, just be consistent with it, okay? I've rotated my work. I will go ahead and work across the top of my foot. So this is needle two. I'm just knitting across needle two and I will just knit across needle three. When I get to the end of needle three and I rotate, I will be to my needle four, and this is where we have to do our gusset shaping again. So right here, remember, I never wanna do my shaping on this first stitch, so I always will knit that first one. Okay, so it's always knit the first one on needle four, knit the last one on needle one. Now, because I'm doing this the traditional, I would do an SSK, so I slip as if to knit, slip as if to knit, put my left leg needle into the front leg of those two stitches and knit them together. If I was doing this alternative, this would be where I do my knit two together. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying when I say just you're, you're switching up the decreases. It just depends on the look you're going for. Let me get to the end of this round here. See, I'm just knitting all the way down to the bottom again. And I'm gonna set this down, and we're already beginning to get our shaping going right here. The next round, I will just knit the whole round without any shaping. You only do the shaping or the decreasing, okay? You only do the decreasing every other round. And you do that until your two needles, your needle one and your needle four, get back to the same number of stitches as you had when you started. So for me, that would be 12 stitches and 12 stitches, okay? If you're working on the men's size, it would be 16 stitches and 16 stitches. Now, I wanna show you a little bit of what I mean by the traditional and alternative. Um, the only difference between the two, besides the fact you're just swapping which decrease you do on which side, is the look, okay? So let me show you here. Let me set these two socks down so you can see the difference. Let's talk about the traditional one first, and that's this one here. This is the one where on the first gusset, you work up to the last three stitches and you do a knit two together and then knit one, and then on needle four, you would knit one and do an SSK, which is just what I showed you. What that results in is a series or a line of decreases that really go the same direction as the gusset. It gets a really nice, pretty line, right? If you do the alternative, which is the blue sock pattern that I did, all that means is on the needle one, when you come up, you're doing an SSK, and on needle four, you do the knit two together. What that does is it makes the decreases have this little itty bitty line that I think is super pretty. I love, I love that stitch pattern. It's something about it combined with the eye of partridge and the garter stitch. I love the way that looks. And like I said before, when I do the knit two together on my needle four, it actually keeps those stitches tighter than when I do my SSK on needle four. So I tend to like it a little bit better. That's why I wrote it in my, uh, my pattern, my sock recipe pattern, because it's my preferred way to go about it. 
So why am I even bringing it up in this video? Well, you guys know, um, those of you who have done my knit alongs before, I really try hard to show you many different ways to understand how a pattern works and to really give you the knowledge you need to um, make patterns in the future maybe that I'm not helping you out with. Where now if you come up to a sock pattern and it tells you to do the decreases a little bit differently, you know why. You have a, a more knowledge in your head and understanding of why the gusset might be written that way, okay? So either way works. It's purely just a matter of what decrease you want to use when, okay? So Okay, let's talk about your homework. What I need you to do is get through all of your gusset decreases. That means I need you to decrease down every other round until you have the number of stitches that you cast on with. Once you've done that, your work is gonna look a little something like this, whether you use the traditional decreases or if you use the alternative. Either way, you're gonna get a really nice section of your sock where it's really looking like a sock. So much so that you could actually put this sock on your foot at this point to see how much further you've got to go. Once we get past this gusset decreases, we really are on the home stretch. This is going to take no time at all to finish. Um, and you're just going to be super duper excited. Don't forget that if you're working on your second sock that you get that one with the heel turn and the gusset done as well. So that way you're ready to jump in to part five next week. Uh, and we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun guys. It's going to go in no time from this point on. It's just going to be like zooming through. You're not going to believe it. I'm so proud of you. Make sure if you work on your sock pattern and share it on social media, you use hashtag Marley Bird. I would love to be able to see your work in progress and smash your like button as well. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. Thanks. Everything you need to know about knitting or crochet can be found right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel. Learn with Marley Bird. Visit youtube.com forward slash Marley Bird.